In today's video I'm going to be taking apart this uh, Asus GTX 750Ti graphics card. Uh, so I bought this um, to go into a Dell Precision Xeon machine that I bought off eBay. Uh, so we're looking at you know fairly cheap parts. I bought the PC for £30 and uh, ended up paying £30 for this as well. So, yeah, that PC came with a uh, NVIDIA Quadro 600 card, which, you know, obviously isn't great. And I uh, just wanted to try and, you know, um, get something a little bit nicer in the machine. But obviously while, you know, working within the, uh, the power uh, consumption uh, requirements of the uh, Dell power supply that's in the machine. So the maximum power rating for that was 275 watts. This card's got a, a power rating of 150 and uh, the Xeon chip is about 65 watts I believe so it, it felt like this would be probably about the maximum that uh, I could actually put into it and even then with this machine with this card actually having the uh, six pin uh, PCIe power adapter on it the power supply in the Dell didn't have one of those so I've had to uh, augment the power on this card with a SATA to PCIe uh, adapter I've benchmarked it and it seems to be fine, you know, it's uh, it's not blown up anyway, so um, yeah, I think we're probably fairly safe. Uh, so onwards with the, uh, the teardown here. So when I um, started to benchmark this card, when I just bought it, just to obviously confirm it was working, uh, I was using TimeSpy and it was benchmarking around about 1200. So after a quick uh, Google search, found out that uh, you know on average it should be about fourteen to fifteen hundred. So we're a bit down, you know, um, maybe sort of twenty percent down on what it should be. Um, so I thought, yeah, probably the best way to go would be as it's a little bit dirty, we'll take it apart, give it a clean, and uh, just see what's in here. Um, obviously, we'll uh, once we've disconnected the heatsink, we'll have to reapply some thermal paste and. Uh, then we'll benchmark it again and see uh, see what kind of improvement we've got. So this is the first time into a graphics card uh, for me. Never done this before. So this is purely me self-discovering how to get in here. When I was building PCs back in the day, I mean this uh, this kind of graphics card would be new at the time, and probably this would be even newer than uh, when I actually stopped building them. Uh, well, it would have been around uh, the kind of time of the Athlon XP64 machines, FX64s, uh, GeForce uh, 3, 4 were probably uh, the latest cards. Um, so yeah, we're talking quite a while ago. So yeah, this is uh, a voyage of discovery for me. So uh, yeah, let's uh, see what we need to do to take this apart. So I've taken the, uh, the fan shroud off now, just disconnecting the um, little uh, power connectors. Uh, they're quite tight, so uh, just using a screwdriver to lever the uh, the sides of each one up. Okay, so we're going to put the fan shroud away now and uh, concentrate on the main card. So it's got uh, quite a large heatsink on it. Um, now to remove this, we just need to undo the four screws on the back of the card. One of them has got a small sticker on, um, that's for warranty purposes. Just trying to scratch it off now, um, didn't work very well, so um, yeah, I just got in there with the screwdriver. So lifting the card up now, the heatsink stays on the table, and you can see that uh, uh, things to note, uh, we've got thermal uh, grease uh, on the uh, GPU die but no uh, no thermal grease or pads or anything for the memory chips although the memory chips did look like they were touching the heatsink where we've got two uh, square marks there. The paste was dry, absolutely dry as a bone um, so I'm guessing that's probably where most of the performance is going to be getting lost um, so we'll, uh, we'll put some new stuff on but here I am just checking out the capacitors so uh, to check on these capacitors you want to be looking for any leaks around the, the base where it touches the board or any kind of uh, misshapen can like the top is um, not flat you know if it uh, feels like it's kind of 
you know, expanding a little bit from inside out, then uh, that can show you that there's quite a back capacity there. But these actually look quite good to, uh, for the moment because there's no problems with the actual card and uh, they look okay. I'm going to leave them on. So uh, we'll just, uh, yeah, do the, uh, the standard cleanup and uh, thermal paste application. So the way I thought I'd uh, go about cleaning the card is to uh, use my uh, standard tools of um, isopropyl alcohol and uh, earbuds and uh, just give it a good liberal soaking. So this uh, isopropyl alcohol is quite good for breaking down uh, kind of greasy uh, the deposits and uh, general dirt. And then uh, using a toothbrush just uh, going all over it, um, just trying to work in. Uh, before the isopropyl um, dehydrates, just to basically work it into the uh, surface and just get as much of that stuff off as possible. It's a fairly standard technique. Um, it's one that I, I use on the uh, the more retro computers to uh, clean off, uh, you know, uh, remnants of battery acid and that kind of thing. So uh, yeah, it is. Uh, it's quite a good cleaner. So uh, it uh, it brings this card up actually quite well. So I'm just rubbing on the board here, just uh, just seeing what's what's basically left. The uh, with kind of dirt mixed in with the isopropyl. It's not too bad, really. I mean, it's a little bit smudgy, but um, yeah, when, once it's dried off, it looks uh, looks quite nice actually. So moving attention to the heat sink, um, going to scrape all this uh, old um, thermal. Uh, kind of paste grease whatever you want to call it off it was really quite hard and um, a bit more ice propyl and then uh, give it a good rub and that, uh, that does see the uh, see the back of it so once we finish scrubbing here um, Get most of it off, then uh, I'm just going to finalise it with uh, basically just a workshop wipe. Um, it's like a like an all-purpose kind of wet wipe, really, and uh, and just uh, just does the final bit of the job. So moving attention now to the fan shroud. This is obviously the dirtiest. It's obviously uh, where the fans uh, pull in. Uh, the dust and stuff in it, um, you know, it just collects around these uh, these assemblies. So um, yeah, we just have to be very careful and uh, try and get the fans out. So the uh, the wiring's kind of it's rooted around the side of the shroud and clipped in with small clips, which are looking potentially uh, quite sort of flexible. So uh, we just go easy and make sure we don't snap anything. So we just want to go nice and steady, uh, just wiping each of the surfaces in turn, nice and gently. You don't want to snap any of these fins off. Um, I very much doubt you can probably get replacement fans for these cards nowadays. So uh, yeah, certainly want to make sure that we're not breaking anything. So we just uh, finalise this bit of the clean up now with uh, just a good wipe around the shroud. Might give it a spray with the IPA, um, try and get some of this uh, sort of ingrained dust off of the inside. Um, Then once we've uh, finished this bit of the cleaning, then uh, basically it's just a reassembly, put the fans back in, try and rewire the uh, uh, the wiring up into the clips, and then uh, get on with uh, putting the assembly back together again. So I think my uh, my takeaway for this video really is uh, just how easy this actually is. And obviously this is a slightly older card, they are a bit more complicated nowadays. Now you'd, uh, you'd probably struggle to take apart uh, you know, an RTX uh, you know, 4090 or something quite as easy as this, but um, you know, the principle is just the same. You know, so long as you're methodical with your uh, taking apart of these devices, making sure you don't get the uh, screws mixed up, 
and uh, just go in slow and steady so you don't snap anything then um, you know there's no reason why anybody can't actually just do this DIY quite easily and uh, you know you might uh, get the same results or uh, even better potentially than uh, what, uh, what we'll eventually see with this card so uh, yeah I don't think there's anything to uh, to really hold back on just uh, just have a go give it a try uh, so we're just now uh, putting some uh, heat sink uh, paste on so this uh, this stuff I've got actually I bought um, probably about five six tubes uh, from eBay um, literally it's the cheapest stuff you can buy I think I paid about four pounds for it um, for all of those tubes you know so I've got a lifetime's worth of, um, of uh, thermal grease <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're not talking about, uh, you know, um, Arctic Grizzly or, you know, Cooler Master, you know, uh, Cooler Nort or whatever it's called. You know, that stuff is ridiculously expensive and probably, you know, it has its market, you know, if you're doing this to uh, significantly faster and more more heat, um, you know, sensitive components, you know, that, that's probably going to be worth buying. But for, certainly for these kind of components, you know, um, you, you don't need anything that special, to be honest. Um, you know, what we're about to find out in the uh, diagnostics is that, um, you know, this, this card is going to be running so much nicer once this is done, you know. Um, certainly worrying about, uh, you know, how expensive your thermal paste is, you know, certainly not on my radar. Um, so, yeah, just use the uh, cheapest stuff I can find and it's worked out really well. So I'm just screwing the heatsink back on again. You know, I made a note um, that the memory chips, you know, they've got nothing on them. You know, they, they do appear to be making sort of fairly direct contact um, with the heatsink themselves. So, you know, the manufacturer obviously thought that was good enough, uh, you know, when it was made. So I'm going to stick with that process and uh, just put the stuff on the uh, GPU die. So, um, yeah, just uh, tighten up the screws in a sort of, um, you know, uh, opposite pattern. So you uh, get from one corner to the next just to try and uh, not load one particular part of the uh, uh, GPU uh, unnecessarily. So uh, once all the screws are tight, you're good to go. Well, I'm really pleased with those results and uh, thank you all for watching and uh, hopefully that's uh, helped you to uh, decide if you're going to do this kind of thing to maybe some of your older cards and uh, what um, performance uh, improvements you, you might get. So uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>